Today on Water's Ironworks, we are going to be making a dinner bell. This is uh, another project actually from the backyard blacksmith. Uh, hadn't planned on doing another one from that book, but uh, out at Pioneer Farms where I do a lot of smithing and instructing, we have the Lost Pines Knife Show coming up in the future of when we film this, but potentially in the past from when you're watching it. Uh, you know, timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly, all that kind of stuff. Um, and we're looking at what sort of classes can we offer at the Lost Pines Knife Show in order to give people an introductory blacksmithing experience. Goal was, let's make a class that is two hours long or less, around the $50 range. Um, and we're doing four different classes, different projects for each one. One of them is going to be this dinner bell. It is, I think, an absolutely great project for a beginner. It gives them a nice big thing that they've made that they can show off to all their friends. It makes a lot of noise. That's good, I guess. Maybe not give it to your kids. Um, and being here in Texas, I mean, this is a, a classic kind of Texas uh, item that you want having uh, around your house. So super excited about it. Um, the project uses half inch steel. We've got 34 inches of steel that we're going to be using for the dinner bell and then 10 inches of half inch round bar that we will be using for the clanger. Um, this is a great easy one to knock out. I'm actually thinking I'm going to probably make some more of these ahead of the knife show and try and sell them out there. So fingers crossed this uh, all goes pretty well. Uh, let's get the forge fired up and I will show you how to crank one of these out. Before I put this into the forge, one thing I did want to point out is I have marked and then punched 11 and a half inches in from each end of the bar. This is going to be where my triangle bends each time. So um, I'm going to toss this into the forge. We're going to heat up one end, draw it out into a point, and then into a, a round. So we'll make a taper on each end, and then we'll go in and we'll do the bending on it. So let's get this hot. So here we're going to put a points on it at the edge. Don't need to go super sharp with it, but we do want a nice little point. Again, when you're making these points, it's got to be at the edge of the anvil. Hammer blows half on, half off. And another key tip, if you'll look back here where my hand is, when I'm doing this, I'm rotating back and forth 90 degrees with my wrist. If you try and do this by spinning it, it's real hard to make sure that you're going back and forth 90 degrees. This wrist trick will get you back and forth on spot so that you can have a nice uh, square taper. So we've got our point, we're gonna heat this back up. We'll draw it out, maybe four inches the length of, or the width of my anvil here. Uh, and then we'll take it round, same thing on the other side. Just work our way back. As this gets cold, we'll put it back in the fire. Again, not going for anything super specific, just about the length of the anvil. We'll keep working that a little bit more. So what I'm looking for are things here, like where there's not an even line right there. I wanna come in and even that out. This is looking pretty good. It's reasonably even as I look along there. We'll get this hot one more time. We'll come in, knock these corners in, and then we'll take it to round. It's working along the corners. And what I want is to have eight even sides and then you come in and you start at the tip rolling it a little bit working your way back we're going to take one more heat on this uh, i am also a 
apparently running out of propane here, so there may be a brief interlude that will cut away from uh, where my cameraman and I run and go get some more propane so we can finish this project up. Uh, but if you've noticed the color temperature as I'm pulling this out, it's a little cool. Um, that's why it's nothing intentional. Uh, forge is just running a little, little cold as I'm running out of propane here. Just working our way around, looking for anywhere where I can see a line and hammering that back in on itself. looks pretty good it's got a bit of texture in it which I think is not a problem at all especially for this kind of look we'll heat this up then curl it a little bit and then work on the other side if we drew at a point we're gonna come in it's gonna give this a little bit of a decorative spiral spiral here or curve How much you do, how much you curve it, it's 100% up to you. I just want to curve it a little bit so that it'll look nice uh, where the two sections join. So, something along those lines. Let's quench this off, we'll put the other end in and work on that. We've got the other end hot, same activity. got a point on there it may take that a little bit sharper it will get a little sharper um, as we round it but let's heat that up again and we'll draw it out and again we're just gonna work our way back getting a nice taper here That's looking pretty good. It's about the length of my anvil face, which is what I was looking for. Got relatively even tapers going back. We'll heat this up one more time, come in, put it on the diamond, knock those edges in and take it to round. So on the diamond, start in the back with heavy blows, lighten up as we work forward. Start working our way around. Straighten this out a little bit. Let's take one more heat on this to really uh, smooth it out. And then we'll bend it and we'll be ready to make the triangle. Just rounding this up, hitting anywhere that looks like a high spot, anywhere you see a line, forging that back down into it. Until you get to the point that you're happy with it. That looks pretty good to me. So we'll heat this back up one more time. I am going to try and make sure that this is bent in line with the other one that I've done so that I don't have to twist the bar at the end. If you do, it's not a, a huge problem. So I think I'm gonna to wanna to bend this down this way so it's in the same direction there. Let's work that down a little bit. Go. 
they don't match exactly, and that's not a problem. I think they look nice, a little asymmetric. Um, but this looks pretty good. So we've got both ends done. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here at our one-third marks. We're gonna get it hot there. We're gonna take it to the vise. We're gonna bend it in the vise and try and bring it up so it's, uh, it's gonna form our triangle here. So I'll quench this end off a little bit and put it back in and get this section hot. So we'll line this up in the vise. I wanna find my mark. Right here. Tighten that up. Probably just grab this with a pair of tongs. Pull it around. If you want it a little bit tighter, you can certainly grab a hammer. Give it a couple hits. looks pretty good. Straighten this up on the anvil. We're going to need to switch sides now, so I'm going to quench this side so I can hold it, and we'll put this next side in and heat that mark up. Grab this, I can twist it a little bit to line them up. Take this to the anvil. I'm gonna to need to heat this up again. Obviously, this is not very straight yet. Luckily, picked up a little torch here. Since this is no longer gonna fit into my propane forge. It's slipping a little bit when I do it, so I'm gonna grab a second pair of tongs here. Push that over a little bit. I'm thinking I might not have been so precise on my measurements. Let's heat up this other side here. Let's lean into this a little bit and try and close this up. Take it to the anvil. I think we can straighten it out. Ideally, you would want this to be a little bit hotter than it is. We stuck this back in the forge rather than trying to do it with the map uh, torch. Let's bring it out. Just want to kind of flatten this all out a little bit. I roll this one around a little bit more here. Let me quench this and then I want to come back and talk a little bit about it. So let's take a look at what I think is going on here. So I made my marks. There's one right there and there's one right here. And these marks were at one third the length of the uh, original parent stock before I, I drew out these tapers on it. And then when I went into the vise, I put this mark right at the jaw of the vise right here and then I bent it. And what that meant is that rather than this bend being at the center or this mark being at the center of my bend, which is up here and up here, it's at the start of my bend. And that means that all of the bend is in these two arms. That's going to make effectively this bottom section longer 
than these two arms. So if I was going to do this again, and, and I will, but not for this video, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that mark in and then I'm gonna back off the vise a little ways from that mark so that as I bend it, the bend is centered around that mark rather than that being the start of the mark. But that being said, this won't prevent it from, from ringing. A little bit weird shaped, but uh, that's okay. We know how to do it better next time. Um, we will now do the clapper, which is uh, super simple. We're gonna heat it up. We're gonna taper one end. We'll round it just like we did those two points. And then we'll bend it around into a circle so that it can hang on the triangle. And this project will be done. So let's eat this up. Taper it just like before. We've got a good point there. Um, let's go ahead and heat it up again and we'll draw that back. Draw this back a little ways. Work our way down. Same thing on the other corner. looking pretty good still got a bit of a heat in it so I'm going to come in just work this around I do want to make sure that I'm leaving well, I guess you've got two options. You can leave enough on it so that it hooks on like that, or you can try and make it so you can just barely squeeze it in there. I'm gonna leave enough on it so it can just hook down. I think we're just about there. Strain it up a little bit. Um, I do wanna bend this so that it's centered. The top of my hook is centered over this. So we're gonna heat this area up I'm gonna quench uh, the tip of it here and then give it a couple blows in order to straighten this up. So we're gonna quench this a little bit here. Just give it a couple hits. Knock it into alignment there. What we're looking for is so that it'll hang straight I want one more tap there. That looks pretty good. So we've got it quenched, we've got our triangle. It rings pretty well. One note on these triangles is you do need a gap on this corner and you can't um, squish them together or tie them with leather, anything that's gonna dampen the vibration. The picture in the Blackyard Blacksmith shows the leather strap and it hanging like this and I'll admit, it looks pretty cool. Um, but if you do that, it, it kills the sound on it. So just think about what you want. Do you care about the noise? In which case you need to leave this open. Uh, if you don't, then um, they look pretty great hanging like that with the leather cord binding them up. So there you go. Dinner bell um, made out of just some half inch mild steel. Pretty easy project, uh, assuming you don't run out of propane and also making sure that your marks, don't put those right at the vice jaw. You wanna back off uh, an inch or an inch and a half maybe to try and make sure that that bend is taking place with the mark at the center of it rather than at the start of it. And you'll get uh, something that's a lot more triangular than the one that we just made today. If you have any questions, please feel free to answer them in the, or drop them in the comments. As always, I answer the ones that I answer. Um, other than that, have a great day out there and happy forging. See you again soon.